Hey traders, the Chart Guys Swing Report newsletter is currently live in the description of this video. There are two links. The first is to the sign up page where you can also get emailed an example of a previous copy. And the second is to an in-depth video to let you know exactly what the swing report entails. Appreciate your attention. Let's get on to the charts. Hey traders, checking in on the broader market before we get into technical analysis. A couple of things for housekeeping. The first is from the video yesterday. Appreciate all the comments about my ghost story, but for those of you that don't know my dry sense of humor at this point, it had nothing to do with a ghost. I just fell. And it was a play on human beings' tendency to protect their ego and put fault on something else when clearly I was not paying attention and I misstepped. Nothing pushed me from behind, but now going back and reading some of the comments and knowing some people were zoomed in and looking at my back and looking for the ghost clues, I feel a little bad. So let's give away some free courses. And you need to tell me which course you want once I tell you you are a winner. So go to chartguys.com, check out the courses, choose what you want. But the way to win them, we're going to give away three, let's say. First one, I will choose randomly someone who shares this video on Twitter. And not many people do that, so that's a pretty high probability of winning. Number two, I will choose a random comment on this video's YouTube page. And number three, I will read the comments as I always do and choose a winner that I want. So three winners, free courses, let's do it. So as far as today's trading action, gap up open and things were too extended to be looking for bull entries this morning. So we had three options today. If you're in bullish positions from overnight, do you wanna hold through hourly consolidation or do you wanna lock in profits? If you're an aggressive bear, you're looking for positions to benefit from hourly consolidation. And if you're a patient bull, you're waiting for an hourly higher low to form on the consolidation. So gap up open, the tech sector gap up and pulled back most of the day. All of our high flyers like Amazon and Tesla pulling back very notably. I'm watching all of those names on the four hour time frame. We'll look at those in just a bit. Let's look at them right now real quick. So again, big bull move up, big drop back down. We're scouting four-hour higher lows, whether it's Amazon or Tesla or whoever. Anyone that's a high flyer, that's the setup we're watching for. So SPY, I didn't watch SPY much today. I was just watching QQQ and XLF because they were tick for tick inverse for a large part of today. And the past two days, that has stood out to me very notably more so than usual. And that's keeping the S&P 500 bulls happy. And the S&P 500 is red today, but it's the highest close we've seen on the COVID bounce. And we got within maybe 4.5% of the all-time high in the S&P 500 today. So S&P 500 bulls are just fine. We did see a little sell-off into the, into the end of the day. But if XLF is going to go up every time QQQ drops, it's going to keep the S&P 500 healthy to a certain degree. Because as we know, if we're going to see any notable weakness, it's when our major sectors are dropping at the same time. So SPY pulled back, hourly higher low was set, lower high into the end of the day, bear break, so it did confirm an hourly downtrend. But if we look at the S&P 500 futures chart, what's the most likely scenario on the four hour chart? A higher low. And it's just a question of whether the consolidation is going to favor continuation or if the consolidation is significant enough to be favoring a tightening range as the most likely scenario. And with where we stand right now, it's still on the fence. And holding that 12 period exponential support is a good visual guide for that fence. Get under that exponential support and tightening range will then become much more likely than continuation would. So four hour higher low watch overnight. IWM. So IWM with a solid bull day. And again, it's because the healthcare and financial sector matter more than the tech sector. And we broke the short-term range bullish, highest price we've seen in a month, and we're looking up at 150.26, but most notably the high of the COVID bounce, 153.39 is the most important level from here, and that is about 3.5% away. QQQ. So QQQ, gap up open into profit taking. What's most notable to me, double top at the all-time high by one penny. Now, normally that rejection, I say, okay, we're making note of it. We're looking for an hourly higher low. We set the hourly higher low, then a lower high, 
then we confirm the hourly downtrend into the end of the day. That makes it more meaningful to me. Four hour chart, still looking for a higher low compared to yesterday, but this is a double top worth keeping eyes on. Bears aren't proving anything, but the setup is there, okay, double top at the all time high. If we lose the daily uptrend from here, it's way more notable. And Microsoft earnings are tomorrow after hours. That's gonna have a significant impact on QQQ. And then next week, we'll have some more juggernauts in the tech sector that will be key. So for QQQ, if the bulls can hold 255.62, they stay just fine. But again, there's just some sites out there, some signs where we just wanna be cautious. Apple, tightening range, all time high, low, lower high, higher low, double top to the penny today. And it's a tightening range. And if we break bearish, we have the potential to confirm a daily downtrend for the first time on the COVID bounce and the potential to lose the daily 12 period exponential support for the first time in three months. We've seen a weekly higher low, a higher low every weekly candle for three, six, nine, 12, 15, 17 candles. And if we have a couple bearish reactions in a couple of the most important tech names, then we may see the tech bulls derailed a little bit and need some more significant weekly consolidation, or at least some initial consolidation in the case of Apple. But for QQQ, it would be more significant weekly consolidation if we lose the daily 12 period exponential support. So again, only aggressive bears are gonna be top fishing that resistance level. Otherwise, bulls are gonna be protective of profit if we start to see signs. Again, we wanna be watching for signs where we say, this is the first time this has happened in months. That's a very notable statement. So if we see Apple lose the 12 period exponential support on the daily for the first time in three plus months, that's a notable event. But for right now, just a double top and watching to see can the bulls give us a daily high or low and knowing that Microsoft earnings after hours tomorrow will have a significant short-term impact on the tech sector. Unless it's a non-event earnings, which is possible as well. XLV, new all-time high today. So again, just slowly grinding higher. Not much follow through, but tons of space for a daily high or low once we do top out. And again, the healthcare sector holding on for the most part today helped the S&P 500, which closed green, even though the tech sector was down over 1%. Financial sector, again, the last two days, the inverse correlation between XLF and QQQ has been very notable to me. Let's just look at the five minute time frame to start the day. 15 minutes of bull, pull back almost to the low of the day, but hold it, and then a new high of the day. And QQQ, 15 minutes of bear, decent little bounce, puttering around near the low of the day, and then a new low of the day. So inverse to each other. We have a bit of a double top on the XLF daily time frame. Higher low is set at 23.75. The top of this move and the top of the reaction to earnings was 2440. We broke it, but only by three pennies. So the bulls definitely want a bit more follow through to continue this daily higher low, higher high pattern, knowing that we are looking for a weekly lower high compared to 2683 as the most likely scenario on this current bounce. But that weekly lower high will not be set as long as the daily uptrend remains intact. Biotech sector. All-time high was 120.97. We broke it, but only by nine pennies today. And daily consolidation is now underway with the most important higher low level of 114.56. So all about 114.56 in the short term. And we'll see if the bulls can maintain the daily uptrend. SMH semiconductors, gap up open for profit taking. We did get a new all-time high. And on this daily consolidation, I would call anything above 154.81 as a daily high or low, keeping the daily uptrend intact. So no major red flags. Not surprising to see profit taking after the size of the move yesterday and the gap up open that resulted. And it looks like someone's having bullish earnings after hours in the semiconductor sector here. I'm not sure who it is off the top of my head. Looks like airliners... It's not a factor, but curious UAL, no real impact. So I don't have off the top of my head who has earnings at the moment in the semiconductor space, but someone did. 
and it was bullish. The VIX is weak, and we dropped to a lower low today. 24.90 broke. 23.50 held, and if 23.50 breaks, it's the lowest price we've seen on this post-COVID dump consolidation. And after 23.50, we're then looking down at 22.20. And the next time we bounce, anything under 3370 is a daily lower high. Metal bulls, big day, just continuing their strength. Gold, nice little ramp up in bull volume, up at the high of the move. Daily uptrend easily intact. Daily 12 period exponential support. Nice visual guide. Silver, huge day. Again, this daily bull flag and the two days of follow through, massive comparative to gold. And just as a rough comparison between the two you got the last month of trading and we got silver averaging over five percent a week and in the last month of trading for gold you've got an average of about one and a half percent a week less than that very big difference over the last month of trading one thing that I want to note is a relationship here where we have XAU, XAG, which is showing us who's stronger, silver or gold, and it's dumping because silver is putting a beatening on gold the last two days. But we had this bear break of 94.78 confirming the weekly bear flag. When did that happen? That happened on July 13th. So look at this weekly chart. Pull back, little lower high, dump, bear flag, dump. Look at the dollar. To me, it's very similar. A little lower high, dump, bear flag, dump. When did 95.72 support break to confirm the weekly bear flag? Today. So, it's a very similar chart, but the XAU, XAG chart gave a heads up long before that a weekly bear break was perhaps the most likely scenario. Now, what I'm watching for is once the dollar bounces, whenever that happens... Is the dollar bouncing going to mark the peak of silver versus gold relative strength? When we see the dollar start bouncing, and I'm not just talking a week over so bounce, I'm talking a daily trend change. Is that going to mark the period in time where gold starts to gain strength against silver again? That's something I'm going to be watching because this is just, again, I look at one chart and I look at the other chart and I say, hmm, that looks exactly the same. So then I start paying attention to the correlations. So I'm going to be very curious if the dollar bouncing sees gold gain strength relative to silver. And that doesn't mean it goes up faster. It can also mean that they're both pulling back on the dollar bounce, but silver's pulling back harder. That would also lead to the XAU, XAG chart bouncing. So I'm just thinking aloud, and that's essentially how I monitor correlations and look for clues and look for new information. Miners, solid bull day. Gap up open, keeping strength. Hourly uptrend remaining intact, but we almost lost it at the end of the day. High of the day, low of the day, lower high, and we would have to break the low of the day to confirm the hourly downtrend. So if the low of today breaks tomorrow, daily consolidation underway, and tons of space for a daily higher low to try and form. Oil bull break. All assets breaking bullish. Metals breaking out, S&P 500, breaking its high of the COVID bounce, oil breaking the high of the COVID bounce, Bitcoin's even trying to get a rally going. So oil bull break of 41.74. We're on to September futures contracts at this point, CLU 2020. Daily higher low established. We're just keeping these little daily higher lows, every pullback. And now resistance is 42.51 and then 43. And we'll just see how long can the bulls maintain the daily uptrend. Natural gas, daily inside bar, not much going on. If it breaks bullish, we're going to watch for a lower high compared to 175, 1758. And what the bulls would want to see is a daily trend change back in their favor to indicate a weekly higher low has been set. But that's going to take a lot of work from the bulls. Hope you had a good day. And we'll check back in tomorrow. Again, clear double top in the tech sector, but... No major red flags as long as the daily uptrend remains intact.
do good things. So a multitasking workout tip. In this instance, I put everything in one bucket and as I'm walking from point A to point B, just do some curls, lift it over my head. And that's something you can do in your everyday life when you're walking around. If you're going to the store, maybe get a basket and carry it and get some reps in. Might as well accomplish two things at once and save some time and benefit ourselves in the process.